Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, has said, Remembering death will kill off our lust. We need to always make sure that we don't get so occupied in this dunya that we forget that one way we will be departing this world. And that's why it's good, it's mustahab, it's recommended to remember death as much as we can, to visit the, ce to visit the cemetery as frequent as possible, to participate in funeral processions, in fatihas, in uh, programs where people are mourning, and also to uh, learn a little bit about the process of what happens when one does pass away. This is a quick tutorial in explaining the ghaslul mayit, the washing of a dead body. And the mannequin that we have today is Hassan, who has passed away, and we're going to quickly learn how we need to wash the marhum Hassan. There are three types of water that we're going to have to wash the person who has passed away. The first is water mixed with a little bit of sidr. And sidr is from a particular tree. It's grinded into powder. And we just put a very little bit into the water. Not too little, not too much. It still needs to be classified as ma'mutlaq, as absolute water, so we don't want to put too much. We don't want to put too little so that it dissolves very quickly into it. It won't be considered as water that has some sidr in it. The second type of water that we're going to be washing with the second ghasl, with the second wash, is water mixed with kafur. And the same thing with sidr, not so much that it uh, exceeds the classification of it being water. And the third wash is water that is all on its own. Now, we need to remember that uh, when we are doing the uh, ghasl, we're washing the person based on the gender. If it's a male, then a male needs to be washing the body. If the person who's passed away is a female, then a female needs to be washing the body. Unless they are husband and wife. Now, I'm going to assume that um, Hassan doesn't have any clothes on, and either I've taken his clothes off or um, cut the clothes off without making sure that I haven't damaged um, any part of his body because the sanctity of a human being is equal dead or alive. I can't go away uh, ahead and break anything or scratch anything or do anything of that sort. I need to be very very careful and delicate. Also a person's private part needs to be covered throughout the process. It is haram for me to look at someone's private part while washing their body whether they are dead or haram to look at someone else's private part even when they are alive. So the first thing that I do removing the body, removing jewelry, anything that is going to prevent water from getting to the skin and having made, made sure that the private part is, uh, is covered, I'm going to use the uh, tap water, normal water, and wash down any najasa. There might be, for example, some najasa on his arm. I'm going to wash the najasa from his arm or from his leg. Or maybe he might have, for example, excreted some najasa under here. Uh, just wash away the najasa and then using... Um, a cloth or something to uh, remove it and cleaning the rest of the body as much as I can. So that would be the first kind of preparation that I'm doing for um, the body. I think I should just remove my abaya to be more practical. Of course, when you are washing a body, you're going to be wearing an apron, you're going to be wearing uh, gloves. 
again, I'd like to emphasize on the point that the body has its level of sanctity, it should be respected, it has a family, it has loved ones. So one of the things that is forbidden to do is to share information about what you see uh, on the body or what comes out of the body or anything else. So the body needs to be uh, shown utmost respect. Now while you are doing the process of washing the body, there are a lot of mustahab things to do, there are makruh things to do, um, and you're continuing doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With each of the washes, you also need to have the intention, the niyyah, and the person or persons who are uh, doing the wash need to make that intention of, for example, I am doing the first wash, which is the uh, wash uh, with sidr water, wajiban qurbatan illallahi ta'ala. And we're starting from the head and neck, that's part one, part two is going to be the right side, part three is the left side. And we said like any other uh, ghusl, we're going to make sure that we get um, all the parts and uh, seeing that um, Marhum Hassan has just recently passed away, it's, it's easy, there's no issue of being uh, decomposed. The more complicated the case may be, the more difficult it's going to be with the wash. And again, making sure that the siddur goes everywhere. I'm making sure that I'm not uh, looking at the private parts in uh, any way washing that side and then uh, making sure that the water gets to all parts of uh, the right side all the way down till the feet. Now if you were doing this um, in reality you would be doing it with more precision but this is just a quick tutorial showing how uh, a body needs to be washed. Now you're not supposed to be moving. That was the first ghasl, that was the first wash with sidr water. I'm going to do the same thing, doing niyyah, intention, reciting fatiha, reciting dua, uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the mar marhum's sins, to grant uh, him or her heaven, and again, washing the body, with, uh, starting with the head and neck, then doing the right side all the way down, uh, front and um, back. You know, maybe uh, the hand might be, for example, a little bit stiff. Just need to make sure that you get uh, access to as much places uh, as um, possible. And then uh, the left side, again, making sure that the kafur um, is goes everywhere in all the places uh, necessary and turning the body over to the left and then the third is with ma qarah qarah qurah absolute mutlaq water uh, just water purely on its own not mixed with anything else that's going to be the third wash and when the third wash is done, uh, we are finished with the wash. Now, um, again, doing exactly the same thing, front and back, after the head and neck, front and back of the right side, then um, front and back of uh, the left side. The uh, three washes are finished. I have um, a, a cloth that I'm going to dab onto the body to dry it as much as I can. So I go on to the next stage. Another thing that is done before the takfin, before the putting, putting on the shroud is the tahnit. And tahnit is 
the same procedure of using kafur, but not in water this time. You're doing it on al masajid al sabah. You're doing it on the seven places of where you prostrate. So you're rubbing a little bit in your hand, and then you're doing. You're going to put it on his forehead. Then you're going to put some on his palms, then on his knees, and then on the tip of his toes. That's called tahnit. Then we have the takfin or the shrouding, and that is going to be made up of three pieces. One piece is going to be covering his bottom parts from his belly button down to beneath his knees. And I'm going to be covering that in this particular way. The second is the shirt where it's going to go over his head and come, come down over his stomach as well. And the third piece for the shroud that is going to be used for burial is a whole uh, sheet that is going to cover him from head to toe. Each one of these procedures has explanation that needs to be given, wajib parts, mustahab parts, also to avoid makruh things as well, but that will go beyond this very simple and quick tutorial that we have tried to make. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us, give us a long prosperous life, especially in serving our community, in serving our society. And please remember the marhumin with a fatiha. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين